Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today we're going to make this wavy lunch bag or a little purse, or you could even use it for a wet bathing suit holder. Um, it's a really fast and easy pattern. I used a Knit Picks Swish yarn for this project. You can find that yarn at knitpicks.com. I used a pearlescent tonal for the sand color and pacific tonal for the blue. You can also substitute with any medium weight worsted yarn. We're going to use a 5mm USH hook and a yarn needle to sew on the straps at the end. So let's go grab our yarn and hook and let's get started. So to start our bag off, we are going to go ahead and put a slip knot on our hook. And our instructions tell us that we're going to chain 72. Let's leave a nice long tail for weaving in. And just start chaining. Um, you can use stitch markers every 20 stitches or so if you want. Um, I like to always keep my loop the same size as my hook and that keeps my chains nice and even and consistent. Okay, I got my 72 chains and now I'm ready to start row 1 instructions and it's telling me to begin in the second chain from my hook that's because I'm doing single crochets and I need the first chain for height so it says two single crochets now this is being seamed at the end so I'm just gonna work in the back loop because I find it the quickest you can work into whatever loop you want if you like catching two loops you can do that or bottom bump whatever is um, easiest for you I like the back loop when I'm going to be seaming my work at the end, so that's what I'm going to use. So it tells me that I'm going to do two single crochets. So I just enter my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and finish off the single crochet. And then I'm going to do two half double crochets. So I yarn over first, insert my hook in that next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. Do that again. My next stitch is going to be a double crochet. I'm going to do two of those. So I yarn over, insert into my next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, pull through the second two, do that again. This is creating the ripple wave effect that you see in the bag, all the different size stitches. Next, we're doing three treble crochets. So I yarn over twice, Find my next chain, insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two, and then pull through the third two. I'm going to do that two more times. This is the crest of our wave, or the summit, or the top of it, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to start working our way back down. So after these three, we go back to our double crochets. So we're going to do two of those. Pull through two, yarn over, next chain. This is a really simple repeat. Just have to remember what um, stitch you're on. And if you get lost, let me show you kind of how you can see your stitches. Um, an easy way to, if you can't tell the difference between like a double and a treble. So when you look at a single crochet, you're just going to see two little V's. And that's going to be your single. When you see a half double, there's the two little V's, but there's a little bar that goes right above it. So you can look for those V's with the bar to find your half double, and then you're going to be at your double. And the double has one bar across, and you have two V's and two V's. Then you'll see the the treble has two bars across. So if you get if your hook falls out, or you put your work down, you pick it back up, and you're like, oh, how many trebles or doubles did I do? What part am I at? Just look for those bars that go across. You're gonna see the two for the treble, and the one for the double. Those are the kind of the stitches that sometimes it's a little difficult to see what you've done already. So if you're losing count or you didn't um, catch it very easily, that's how you're going to check those out and count them. So now I'm doing two half doubles. 
And now for the bottom of my wave, I'm doing three single crochets instead of two. This is going to be the bottom, just like I did three trebles, I do three singles. Then my repeat starts over. So now I'm going to go back to two half doubles, two doubles, and three trebles. And I'm going to continue that all the way across, going up and down with my stitch height to make my waves. So we're going to work across the entire row in this fashion. And then at the very end, instead of three single crochets, we're going to have two single crochets, just like how we started our row. So go ahead and keep on working across your first row, and I'll meet you right at the end. Okay, now I'm doing my last two single crochets of the row. And I've got 71 stitches total. Remember, you only skipped one chain at the beginning. And you can see I have this nice little ripple wave pattern throughout. Now, row two is really simple. You're just going to turn your work. And we are going to chain one for height. And then we're going to start single crocheting all the way back across. So because it's single crochet, I'm going to crochet right into that very first stitch I come to and every stitch after. So it's just single crochet across. And this is going to keep, because we're keeping it all the same height on this row, our ripple stays. But we'll have a lot easier time with our color changes. If we change colors right now, we're going to have to cut our yarn every single row to be able to do our color changes. By doing this single crochet back across, we will not have to cut our color every time we want to change it. And you'll see what I mean when we go back and do our color changes. So just single crochet back across that second row and I'll see you at the end. Okay, I'm down to my last two single crochets. And what I'm going to do on my very last single crochet is join my new color. So I'm going to insert my hook, pull up my loop and stop there. And then I'm going to take my Pacific tonal here and drape it over my hook and pull that through. So now I have my color change for my next row. And the next row, what we're going to do, the instructions say to chain four and that's going to count as a treble crochet, but I'm going to show you my um, how to eliminate the gaps at the end. Because if I do, let me show you the chain four first. So if I chain four for my treble crochet, I'm going to skip that first stitch, or the last stitch that I made of my previous row. And then I'm going to do a treble in the next one. And when I do that, you're going to see that I get a gap. And that's from the chain four and the no stitch being worked here. So that gap, it's not going to be super noticeable because we're going to seam our work at the end, but there's a way that we can get rid of it really easily. So I'm going to show you that real quick. If you've seen my tutorial on how to eliminate the gaps, you'll already know this trick. But what you're going to do is you're going to pull out your chain as tall as a treble crochet. So just kind of guesstimate. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to do just a little chain one. Then you're going to do your treble in that very first stitch. So if you're just going off of the written pattern, this isn't going to be shown here. This is just a special stitch for the viewers at home. And what that does is it eliminates the gap, but it also doesn't give us a really big bump if we were to work a chain four and a treble in that first stitch. So it's just a little trick that helps eliminate the gaps and makes it a little bit cleaner looking along the edges. So if, every time I do my treble as my first stitch of the row, I'm going to go ahead and do that really extended chain one. Now, after I've done two trebles, I am now going to do two double crochets. So we're kind of doing the opposite stitch of what we did in our very first row, because now we're going to have the waves come together and meet. And that keeps everything rectangular at the very end. So I'll have two half doubles after that. 
the same exact stitch pattern as row one, it's just we're starting on a different stitch. Instead of starting on a single crochet, we're starting on the treble crochets. So when I get to my singles, I'm still doing three single crochets. And those are going to go right on top of the three treble crochets that we did in row one. And then I'm going to start working my way back up again with two half doubles. two doubles, and then three trebles. So same exact pattern, very easy. You're going to do this all the way across again. And notice on my color change I did not fasten off my old color. Don't cut your old color we're going to easily add it in when it's time to change color. So leave it there. It's a little bit more cumbersome when you're carrying your project around, but it's a lot easier because you don't have to um, weave in all of those ends at the end. So just continue across. I'll meet you at the end of this row, and we'll go on to row four instructions. Okay, we're down to the last four stitches of our row three. We got two doubles and two treble crochets. And then after that, we're going to do row four, which is another easy row. It's going to be all single crochets again. So let's take a look at how we're going here. So if everything's done right, you're going to have tall peaks where your short peaks are and short valleys where your tall peaks are. I should say valleys over here. Um, now we are finished with that row. So we turn our work and chain one again for height and single crochet in that very first stitch and every stitch across. This is our super easy watch TV row. Then after that I'm going to show you when we get to the end of this row how we're going to change colors without having to re, um, you know, fasten off our old color and rejoin it. We're just going to run it up our rows. So I'll show you what that means once we get to the very end of row four. So keep working on it and I'll meet you at the end of this row. Almost at the end of our row, we're going to join in our old color so that we can start our next row, row 5. So what I'm going to do is work that last stitch up to my um, pull up my loop and then I'm going to join in my old color. So I'm going to take my tail that I left off when we joined our blue and I'm going to run it up these two rows. Because we're seaming at the end you're not going to see this um, yarn being run up the side. Now don't pull too tight, you don't want to pull it really tight because then you're going to bring your ends together like that and you're going to have a really scrunched up weird looking bag. Instead just pull it nice and slack so it's just laying nice and flat along the edge. As you work your next row and you join this back up, it's going to tighten down any looseness that you have here. So we just turn our work and just like our row one, we chain one. And now we're going to repeat it. We're going to do two single crochets like row one. Notice I'm just leaving my blue. I'm not fastening it off because when I join it back up again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I'm just going to run it up the side and join it back in. So do two single crochets, two half double crochets, two double crochets, and three treble crochets. Same exact thing as row one. So it's pretty much a really easy pattern. You're going to do the same stitches every single time in your sand color, and then the same stitches every single time in your blue color. You're going to do your waves in the first row, single crochet back, switch color, um, waves in the next color and single crochets back. So I'm going to go ahead and work through this whole row and my single crochet back and then I'll show you, we'll join this up again so you can see how I do that again. So go ahead and do two more rows and I'll meet you 
back at the color change. Okay, I'm down at the very end of my sixth row. You can count by twos easily to find what row you're on. Each color chain is a two. Color change is a two. So now I'm going to change back to my blue. So I go to that last stitch, and then I pull up my blue, and I lay it over my hook. Remember, don't pull too tight. Leave it nice and slack so it's a straight line. And then I turn and start my next row. So remember, we're going to do the extended chain. So just pull it out. Make sure you're not pulling on the slack that you just made. And do a little chain. And then start your trap. Okay, so just keep on going until you get to row 34. And then we will move on to our sewing instructions. I am now down to the last two stitches of my row 34, which is my last row of the actual bag. You can see it all laid out here. Um, I'm not going to fasten off after this row because I'm going to use this loop to continue to make my join. Now I haven't fastened off my blue color yet. I just wanted to show you how I do that. So once I join my sand color in, I just have the tail hanging off. So I'm just going to cut a long enough tail to be able to sew it in nice and easy. And I'm just going to leave it alone for now. I'll wait till after I seam everything up to go ahead and um, to go ahead and weave all the ends in. So let me show you my joins on the side so you can see how I ran my um, extra tails kind of up the side as I changed colors. They're nice and slack so I can easily pull my bag any way I want to. Now I am going to get ready to seam the bag. So it says to fold it in half. Yeah. So to begin our single crochet seam, you can see that my hook is in the back of our two layers. So I'm just going to bring it through to the front. Don't need to chain one or anything because we're going to be tightening down these single crochets really tight so you're not going to need a height adjustment. So I'm just going to put my hook through both layers of that very first row or last row of single crochets we did and yarn over it and pull up the loop and then finish off my single crochet. And then like I said before, you're going to tighten it down. So an easy way to tighten it is to pull it straight down from your hook. So pull it just straight down behind you. You want to do that after every single single crochet so you get a nice tight seam. This next row was a row of single crochets at the very beginning, so that's nice and easy. We could just go right through the center of the single crochets. Now the reason that I don't go around the entire single crochet um, will make sense on the next stitch I do, because you'll see that on our treble crochets we can get quite a big gap between them. So if I were to just take my next stitch and go all the way around my treble, and tighten that down. When I open up my bag, I'm going to have big holes along the seam. So I'm going to take a little bit extra time and I'm going to go in between my trebles. I'm going to grab a loop or two between each treble so that I don't catch the whole treble and create that big hole. So it'll help with my seam at the end. Now depending on how high your trebles are, so if you um, pull them kind of high or kind of low, Whatever um, trouble, size trouble you have is going to dictate how many single crochets you can fit into it. So it's probably going to be anywhere from three to four for the most part. If you crochet really tight, then you might only get two in there. But just kind of crochet it evenly along that treble. Make sure you get both layers. Both, yep. Each time you go. The single crochet rows are nice and easy because you just have two single crochets right there. So you're going to work all the way across your seam, all the way down um, this side, and then you have your bottom, and that's a lot easier to crochet into because you have um, some loops that are easy to grab. So those are just going to be single crochets all the way across. Just remember to keep on tightening as you go, and you can catch all of these floating strands that you have along the back as you work. You can crochet around those no problem, don't try to avoid them for any reason. You can crochet them right into your seam if you want. 
So keep on crocheting and I'll meet you at the bottom corner when we're all through. Just working the last few stitches of my single crochet seam. I'm almost to the end so we can turn this the right side out and start making our straps. I'll wait till the end to weave in all my ends. You can do it as you go to kind of minimize the amount at the end. It changes for me. Sometimes I want to do it, sometimes I don't want to do it. So I'm just fastening off in the way that I like to fasten off. And now I can turn this the right side out. You can see I've worked all the way around my edge. Right at the corner, I don't even need to stop. I didn't um, um, crochet in my tails from my beginning chains. I just sewed them in at the end also. So now I'm just going to grab my bag and turn it the right side out. So now I've got my bag finished and I'm going to start on my straps. So I'm going to use my sand color for my straps again. And it says I'm just basically going to do row 1 and row 2 again. So I'm just going to chain 72 one more time. And I'm going to remake row 1 and row 2. So get to working on your 72 chains. And then we'll just quickly go over row 1 and row 2 again. Alright, I finished my 72 chains. And I'm ready to do my row 1 instructions again. Um, you can also do this in blue if you want. You don't have to do it in the sand color. It's totally your choice. But one thing I'm going to change just for my personal preference is instead of working in the back loop only for this row, I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work in the bottom bump. So if you turn over your chain, you'll see these little vertical dashes. And I'm going to work in these because it'll give me a really nice edge. I'll get a nice V edge um, to my strap. So when I do that, I skip the very first bump just like it was a chain. And then I start working in the next one. As you go, it'll be a little easier to catch those. The first couple are a little difficult and it takes a little bit extra time. But the results are really nice. So just like row one, I'm going to do two single crochets in those first two chains after skipping that one um, very first chain. Then I'm going to do a half double. And you'll see that already my chain has turned so that my bottom bumps are facing up. So to catch those, I kind of just stick my finger behind it and kind of push it onto my hook. That kind of helps me catch it. So now I've got two half double crochets. If your yarn splits easily, this yarn kind of splits easily, it's not plied very tightly or tight. Um, just take your time in getting your hook through so that you don't split it and get a funny stitch. Then I've got two double crochets. And we're going to work across again, same as our row one instructions. If you're working the bottom bump like me for the strap, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So you can see that both sides I have nice V stitches, so on this side that I was working, and then my foundation chain. So it's going to give me a nice pretty um, strap edge instead of just going into that back loop. So I'm going to keep working our um, pattern. Now I have three trebles all the way to the end of the row, and then we're going to turn our work and do our watch TV single crochet row two. So I'll get to the end of this row and meet up with you. I'm doing my last two single crochets for the first strap. Then I'm going to turn my work and do my row of single crochets back. And I'll just get kind of an extra um, thickness. I could just leave it at this, but it's kind of thin. I want it a little bit thicker, so I'm going to just do another row of single crochets, like row two. Once I finish this row, I'm going to make a second strap, and then we'll come back and we'll attach these. So if you want, a good thing to do, because you're going to end on each side with a, um, a tail, your beginning tail, and then at the end of this row you'll have a tail on the other side. You can leave those kind of long and you can use those to attach the straps to your bag. So that's also a good thing if you have long tails already. 
Otherwise, you can just always sew it in afterwards with a length of yarn. But that's just a little pointer if you want to do that. So we'll finish this one, make one more strap, and then we'll come back and attach our straps. I've got both of my straps done, and as you can see, I have a nice edge on both sides from using that bottom bump of my foundation chain. Now I'm going to sew my straps onto my bag. So I just put my yarn on a yarn needle, and I'm going to do it about five stitches in. So I'm just going to count from my seam, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm not going to join right at the top. I'm actually going to go in between that last row and the row before, just so I can get my... Um, get a little bit more reinforced seam. I'm going to go across so you can see it pulls it down below the line of the bag and then I'm going to go one stitch over and pull the needle through and then put it through the center of my strap so that way it first starts to secure it then I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to go to the next stitch that I have and go one stitch over on my bag and then I'm going to bring it up. Oops, I got my strap in there. Then I'm going to bring it up and do another row of stitching right above. That way I have kind of a double reinforced seam that will be nice and strong. So you can do that a couple times if you want. If you want to make it super reinforced, totally up to you. Or attach it however you most um, want to. And then I'm going to go over to the other side. I'll fasten that off and weave it in when I'm done. And then I'm going to make sure that my um, strap isn't twisted before I put the next one in. So again I'm going to put my yarn on my needle and since now I'm coming from this side I need to count about seven stitches in because it took about two stitches up and since my my tail's on the opposite side this time I need to count seven stitches in so I'm even on both sides. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember I'm coming through the middle of there. And then go to the next stitch. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side of my bag to attach all of my straps nice and secure. So I'm going to do the other side and then I will show you our finished bag in just a second. We got the bag all done. We have these straps attached. It's all ready to be used for a lunch bag or whatever it is we may want to use it for. Um, you can also make this bag bigger by um, putting the repeat onto your foundation chain. So you have 12 stitches in each repeat, which is your two half doubles, two doubles, three trebles, two doubles, two half doubles, and three single crochets, so that's 12 stitches. So add 12 stitches to your foundation chain for every extra wave you want. So you can make this as wide as you want and as tall as you want just by adding rows. So you could even make this into a pillow, a blanket, whatever you want. So this is a great fun project, and if you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you for watching.